it is time for the underreactions. And I can dance the whole show, guys. Let's do it. I want to start in Pittsburgh because we're going to go to Pittsburgh. We're on the East Coast. I think we are underreacting people to how borderline inexplicable sort of like defies logic math whatever the Steelers are four and two right now look at this and let me explain okay look at this situation with the ranks of the Steelers they're 26th in scoring they're 31st in total offense they are bottom of the barrel guys 30th in total defense and they're minus 24 in point differential on the year I repeat the team record is four and two Four and two right now, okay? It doesn't make any sense. How are they doing this? How did they do it? And to me, I'm going to break it down in a, like a PowerPoint presentation. I'm in the front of the, the room and I'm talking to Connie from accounting. Listen, here's my, click the slide, number one factor. One, Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin. And the end it there. Move on to the next one. He finds a way to keep these guys in games. Oh my God. They, they make other teams uncomfortable. I think his presence, his tone, his like experience does that all. Trips guys on the sidelines sometimes. We're not even going to go there. He let, you know, you let a team hang around long enough, he's going to get to you, okay? And he let his team hang around long enough that his star players are eventually going to ball out and make plays, and they did. Number two, TJ Watt. Okay, TJ Watt, we're not talking about him enough. I can't believe we're not talking about a Watt brother enough. It's never happened until right now. He's on another planet right now. And it's not just the eight sacks, people. It is moments like this. Take a look at this. I hope we're playing it. Yeah. Can we, can we show it? The scoop and score? Yeah. Give me this. Are you kidding me? This scoop and score game winner against the Browns is unbelievable. Or take a look at what he did last week. The Steelers were held to just three points in the first half. His interception off of our, our guy, Super Bowl champion, Matthew Stafford, led to Pittsburgh's first touchdown and totally sparked the offense. It led to two more scores. This is my defensive player of the year to this point with the impact that he's had. And I'm going to go number three. So you got Mike Tomlin, you got TJ Watt, who should be defensive player of the year. year, year. We'll get to that. I know Miles Garrett might have a thing or two to say about it. Um, number three, the big factor in this four and two start for the Steelers, Kenny Pickett coming up clutch. He just is. And he just does people. He showed it last year and it's carrying over into the halfway point of the season as we approach the trade deadline, October 31st. He did it again on Sunday. He had not one, but two fourth quarter touchdown drives, guys, to beat the Rams. And I feel like Kenny can struggle for 55 minutes and it's not going his way. And like Scott Hansen's like taking it from the quad box to the whatever box. And it's like, oh, Kenny Pickett, nothing going on. Doesn't matter. Something happens to him when his back's against the wall and it makes him come to life. Look at this. He ranks in the bottom five in pretty much every category in quarter one through three, and then ranks top five in completion percentage yards per attempt and passer rating in the fourth. So by the numbers this year, guys, that you're seeing, he's ahead. Kenny Pickett, and I'm not like, I wasn't out raging in Miami all night or anything like this. This is like me soberly telling you that Kenny Pickett is ahead of the stars, ahead of the Mahomes, who's being, you know, Kelsey saying he's better than Brady. He's already to go ahead of Lamar, ahead of Tua, to a Lipa in these categories. That's crazy. And we'll see if it's sustainable. It might not be, but the Steelers, um, they're doing it. Four and two, they've got a tough test ran this weekend. They've got a five and two Jag squad come into town, but under reacting to the Steelers and everyone's a built, everyone involved here and their ability to stay above the fray, given what's going on there and what their ranks are offensively. All right. Another thing that I believe that we are underreacting to is how fun it is to do. I met one. I feel like I'm at one of those like desks um, where like the person has to doesn't want to sit all day at their cubicle, so they get like the standing desk, or they have like that thing that they can walk on that like like level treadmill while they're doing their work or whatever. Remember that? Yeah, that's that's how I feel right now because I'm standing in this hotel room um, in Florida. But I do want to talk about how we are underreacting to how special the Seattle rookie corner, Devin Witherspoon is. And now Darius Butler, some were doing push push-ups and not drinking shots of tequila saying, yes, Kay, talk about Devin Witherspoon. We do it a lot, but he's been amazing. The thing is that rookie corners sometimes struggle out the gates. 
historically. Okay. And really like, I think we're kind of forgetting that because it's getting lost in the sauce. That is sauce Gardner from last year. He's sort of the exception, but what Devin Witherspoon is pulling off early is on another level. Okay. He's currently PFF's highest graded corner in the entire NFL NFL. And it's really not only that he's been um, successful that sort of stood out. It's he, he's sort of playing the game. Unlike any corner that we've seen outside of Rod Woodson. I mean that. Okay. Uh, he put it all display Sunday against the Cardinals and sure. And we're going to look at some plays here. The box score didn't jump off the page. And if you haven't seen the hit yet, I, I mean, I'm going to let Seahawks play by play guy. Um, Mike Ray will just take it and do it justice. We're listening. Oh, he does. Oh, my goodness. The hit was by Witherspoon. It was a good, clean, legal shoulder hit by Witherspoon. Holy smoke, what a shot. I mean, he hits like Cam Chancellor. It's the Cam Chancellor vibes that he's giving me. He ball hawks like Richard Sherman, which he, by the way, showed on this pick that he got that got called back because of a rough of the passing call, uh, roughing the passer call. So taking a look at that. Are you kidding? This is a special player. We all knew it going into it. He gets drafted to the Seahawks. Um, obviously, lots of legacy, lots of history with great players. I just mentioned Richard Sherman. But he showed off his pass rushing skills on this sack. Okay, that got wiped away too because there was uh, an illegal contact penalty on someone else. He had a trifecta like this against the Giants on Monday Night Football a few weeks ago as well. I don't know if everybody got to watch that game or pay attention. All of those plays did count, okay? And there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of great corners in the league and there's a lot of guys who are really good at some things and there's a lot of great qualities that can build the perfect cornerback. There are very few corners in the history of the league that can really impact the game on multiple levels like this. They're getting PhDs in different subjects and different things, Okay, I believe we're witnessing the beginnings of greatness with Devin Witherspoon. And I'm really surprised. And I know I mentioned TJ Watt. And I know we're going to talk a little Miles Garrett with our guy Gronk here. But I'm kind of surprised that he's just the second, uh, just second in uh, DPOY odds behind Jalen Carter. Okay, but he's, he's going to do it. I think he's going to do it. I think he actually is going to take over the race. No disrespect to Marissa, who's rolling her eyes somewhere. But right now, what Marissa says doesn't matter because... All right. What a great song. We should listen to that song. That should be mandated if we listen to the um, Snap Power, the power, before we go, go on the air every day. Okay. Um, what should my third under reaction be, guys? You hit me up with what are we not talking about enough? What is not getting enough love? Um, look, a sailboat. By the way, like parasailing? Para what is this thing that they do with like the, it looks like they're a kite in the sky? Kite surfing? Is that what that is? Anyone? Nobody can hear me because I have no IFB, nothing in my ear. I could talk about whatever I want to right now. I could talk about sassy chance and shadow from Homeward Bound for the next 40 minutes and nobody can say anything. Um, okay, my third under reaction. Let's get to it and definitely hit me up um, with yours. Oh my gosh, there's somebody doing the thing where they're looking for treasure and gold on the beach. What are you trying to find there? What are you doing? Um, at Up and Adam Show. Hammer, they want me to bring you in. I'm fascinated by the people who like did and they've got like the shovel and they're sifting through. That's what's happening right now. This is the most unhinged star to a show we've ever had. And then saying something, <laughs> Ooh, look, a Silva. <laughs> and then there's like a barge and you know how I'm scared of water. So I'm like looking for a shark fin out there somewhere, but I want to see. Yeah. I'll show you. Let's take not a bad. look. That's pretty good. I'm not bad. No, I ruined my, my yeah. shot that Lisa and I worked so hard to craft over here. Now, listen, here's here's the deal. I'm going to hand over the floor to you. We got Gronk on the show. We got, De I mean, Dexter Fowler is really picking a bad day to make his debut. He probably doesn't know who I am, what I do, and what he signed up for today. But that's okay. That's okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to, you you last night tried to pitch me on what my third underreaction should be. And you said, you should really do this. I, you sent me an, uh, an unhinged text that said, I've been digging into the numbers for five hours. We got to get into this. And I said, <laughs> you get into it. I refuse because if, if I were to even sell this idea, it would just be, everyone in the world would see the your hand going up my back for uh, the puppet that I would be and talking about the Jags, the five and two Jags. We've got a big test against the Steelers this weekend in Pittsburgh, but you've dug up some numbers and what are we underreacting to Hamilton? All right. I think we're severely underreacting to what Jaguars linebacker Foye Aluokin is doing, not just this year, 
but what he's been doing over the last couple of years. Because he isn't just the leader of this Jaguars defense, making plays like this inter- this pick six that we saw last week off of Derek Carr uh, to lead them to that win on Thursday night. He's having a stretch that puts him with some of the greatest tacklers that this league has ever seen. He's currently second in the league with 81 tackles. That's on pace for 197 on the year. And why is that significant? Check this out. Look at these numbers. It's kind of insane. So since 1987, only two players have had multiple 180 tackle seasons since tackles became an official stat. It's him and it's Jesse Tuggle, and he's already on his way to a third this year. So that means that Ray Lewis, Brian Erlacher, Luke Keekley, all the great linebackers that this league has seen over that span, none of them have done what Foye Lucan is doing right now. And by the way, even with these incredible seasons that he's had, zero all pros, zero Pro Bowl appearances. Wow. He's getting zero buzz outside of Jacksonville. And I really think that we have to do something about this and fix this and get him the love that he deserves. Now, and love matters. And we're doing that here. And this is unprecedented. And this is your very first underreaction in history. <laughs> um, I do think he's gotten paid though, right? Talk to me about that because there yes. have been some reward for what he's done because Trent Balky. And the Jags made him the fourth highest paid linebacker in the league. They steal him away from Atlanta last year. And credit to the Jags front office for being aggressive and betting on him because he sort of changed this whole defense. Yeah, and everybody was so up in arms about the money that they gave Christian Kirk that this this signing kind of flew under the radar too. But this this signing might have even been more important than that one. As great as Kirk has been, he's been the captain of this defense and and you know as you said, basically stole them away from the Falcons and, you know, making him the fourth highest paid linebacker. That was an investment. That was a little bit of a gamble and it's really paid off.